everybody, welcome to Knitting for Newbies Double Knitting Edition. Today I'm going to show you how to actually get started with double knitting once you've cast on your first row of stitches. The last video talked about how to do the invisible cast on, um, which is my favorite method of casting on for reasons explained in that video. Um, but we're actually going to act get started, actually get started with knitting. You're really going to like it and um, I hope that this particular video will help explain a lot of the nuances that come with double knitting and uh, help shed a little bit of light on this tricky looking but actually easy to do technique. So I apologize in advance if this video is a little bit long, feel free to skip ahead if you feel like you don't need some of this information. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start by explaining what we have going on in the background here. I have of course my uh, sample square and my pen to mark off our rows as we go. I also have my knitting needles, my yarn, and my first row of cast on stitches, right? So this is where we left off in the last video. What we're gonna do now is a very important step you have to remember when double knitting. This is where a lot of people get hung up. Um, what I'm gonna do is Pretend like we're still casting on stitches, right? So you'd keep going around doing the uh, invisible cast on. But I need to make sure that you see this twist? See this twist here on the yarn? It's kind of hard to see. I need to make sure that this yarn stays twisted. This helps keep the sides as we knit up our swatch, helps keep the sides together and not open. All right, I'll show you what we mean a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around. And you can see right now they are not twisted at all, right? I need to make sure that those are twisted. Just, so just give it a gentle twist, all right? So not twisted, twisted. And of course we got yellow up here first, so yellow is gonna be the first one we work with. Now if we look at our graph, we can see this background color here. This is the color on the right side of our work that is going to be the background color. It's the first color we're starting with in this row. And um, for, for the sake of this graph, I didn't have a yellow marker, so it is going to be white squares for yellow, purple for purple on the right side of your work. I'll explain a little bit more after we get going. You can see this entire first row is all yellow squares. What that means is we're going to go ahead and start knitting and every one of our yellow squares, because it's yellow here, we're going to knit all the yellow stitches. What you're basically looking at in this graph is the right side of your work. That means you're gonna see all these yellow squares should be yellow on the right side, the purple should be purple on the right side and so on. If we had an inverse of this graph, it would look, you know, kind of the opposite. Um, let me actually, I'll sketch one out for you real quick. Um, but basically what'll happen is, you'll have the very opposite of what we have going on in our graph up here. Hold on just a second. This is not gonna look very pretty, so I apologize. Um, what we would have instead is all of our yellow squares, which on our right side is the background color or the main color, um, on the wrong side or the back side of our work, that's actually going to be your accent color. So you can see kind of the inverse, right? Um, right side, wrong side, front side, back side, however you wanna think of it. We've positioned our stitches on our cast on row so that we are set up to do this first stitch, this first block with our background color, yellow, first. That's because we're gonna knit the very first stitch of every single row, okay? So you wanna make sure that whatever color your, your start of your row is, that that's the right color because you need to be knitting that first stitch. All right, hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna put my pens over here and let's slide this off to the side a little bit. Hopefully I won't be covering it up too much. All right, 
So again, remember, we're knitting the very first stitch of our row, and you need to have that twist in your yarn, okay? So sometimes what I find helpful is to leave the yarn kind of loose. I'm gonna pretend like that's tight, right? Insert my needle as if I'm going to knit, and then twist. You see how I did that? So here it is, nice and loose, inserting my needle as if I'm knitting that yellow stitch taking my yarns and twisting them there. Now I'm ready to knit my first stitch. So we'll just go ahead and knit that real quick. And now we've done the first half of this first block on our graph. Because we're working on the right side first um, and yellow is our background color on the right side, we knitted the yellow stitch. To put the purple stitch on the back side, we need to purl that stitch. What we're gonna do for that is make sure, of course, that your yarn, both colors of your yarn, are in the front of your work. Because again, remember, when you're purling, your, work, your yarn has to be at the front, all right? So then we just purl this next stitch. And that completes the first block or pair of stitches on our graph. Same thing here with the next block. Um, being right-handed, we're working from right to left, so it's the same concept. Uh, this is a yellow square on the front, meaning our yellow stitch is the one we knit. So your yarn has to be in the back for knitting. You just knit that stitch there. And then again, we have to finish off this block by putting a purple stitch in there. It is a purl stitch, because it's in the back. The purple, it goes on the back. So we are just gonna pull our yarn to the front here and purl that purple stitch. Now if I move my yarn, you can start to see that happening, right? When we finish this row, you'll really see it. It's the same thing all the way across for the first row. All of the graphs that I am making for the Geek Alphabet Blanket and quite possibly for all of my uh, graphs that I do for double knitting, I try to make sure that all of my edges are my background color. That way, all of this stuff that I'm telling you in these videos applies to all of my designs, okay? Because this entire first row is worked with the yellow color in the front or worked with our background color instead of our accent color, we're knitting all of our yellow, all of our background colors and purling all of our accent colors or the purple colors, okay? So same concept applies. Just knit all the yellow stitches, all your background row or your background color, and purl all of your accent color. All right, move this off to the side, it's getting a little blurry on the camera. So just keep knitting and purling, alternating back and forth, remembering to move your yarn as needed. So when you're knitting, we are having our yarn in the back and just knitting. And again, I don't know if you saw that, I'm knitting, but I'm only working with the yellow color at this point, okay? So there's my knit stitch. Last one here, we got a purl, so we're pulling the yarn to the front. We're only gonna work with the purple, but the yellow is still in the front. We're leaving it there. Just purling with the purple, all right? There we go. Now this was our slip knot, um, which we used for the invisible cast on. As I've said in other videos, we're actually gonna slide this off the needle and undo this slip knot here. And that's gonna allow for a really pretty, really nice um, edge down here, okay? And that should leave us with 10 stitches. So we can go ahead and count those. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's 10 stitches. That's two for every block on the graph. So five blocks worth, right? You can already see our front side looks pretty darn yellow, doesn't it? Our back side, if we flip this over, is pretty darn purple. That is exactly what you want. So if this is the front here, in the back, you can see the entire first row is yellow on the front and purple on the back. Exactly what you want. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cross off my first row with my lovely red pen. I'll do it on both of them. 
work side by side with this. You don't have to. Um, for the Geek Alphabet Blank Fit, um, my graphs are only going to be showing you the right side. Um, unless I decide later on that we need to have a wrong side graph as well. But this is gonna be the right side. So you only have to cross off one row at a time, okay? Let's set this off a little bit to the side there. There we go. And we are ready to start row number two. Okay. Got a bit of a yarn tangle there, there we go. So now you can see, instead of starting with the yellow, we're starting with purple because we're working on the, the, the wrong side here, the back side, all right? Um, you can think of this as when you're doing the second row, since you're working on the back side, you're gonna do the opposite of whatever this color is. So on this chart here, this is a, a yellow square. So our first stitch is purple. We're knitting the first stitch of every row. Because this is the back side, this is actually going to be purple, okay? Again, we're knitting the very first stitch of every single row. This uh, second row is a little tricky because you got the tails of your uh, remaining slip knot kind of hanging out with your working yarn. You can pull those off to the side if you like. But you can see again, we don't have that twist in our yarn. We need to have that twist, it's necessary. So I'm inserting my needle, then I'm grabbing my yarn and twisting it. And I'm pulling really nice and tight keep that first stitch tight. So we're going to go ahead and knit the first stitch. Oops, knitting that first stitch, sliding it off the needle. Then we need to purl this next stitch here. All right, so we pulled the yarn to the front, purl with the yellow, and there we go. So there you can see our first stitch, looking at it from the back side is purple. It's exactly what we want. Keeping in mind that this chart that we have here shows only the right side. So for the back side, we need to do the inverse, the opposite. So that's the very first block. What I want to stress right now is this particular graph is symmetrical in design. Um, I'm right-handed, so usually when I read graphs, I go from right to left, the next row left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left, and so on. Um, because this is a symmetrical design, if you wanted to, you could just keep reading from right to left for every single row. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to pretend it's not symmetrical though. And I'm gonna start, this is my first stitch, right? If we flip this over, right? This right here is this block on the left. Okay. So we've done this block here. Now what we need to do is actually change colors. Now this sounds really intimidating. Trust me, you got this. What we're gonna do is keep in mind that we need to do the inverse of this color that's showing on the chart, all right? It's saying we need to make this square purple on the right side. To do that, we need to make sure we are knitting the, how do I wanna say this? You wanna make sure you are always knitting the color you want to see on your side and purling the color you don't want to see, okay? So we wanted to see the purple for this block here, so we knitted the purple, didn't want to see the yellow, so we purled the yellow. Here, we want to see the yellow, because remember, this side is the wrong side, we have to show the inverse of this color on the chart. So we're going to actually, we're going to knit, no, we're going to purl the purple color, and knit the yellow color. Okay, so here we go. We are going to purl the purple color. So I'm taking my yarn, since we're purling, it's gotta be at the front. I'm go ahead and purl this purple color. Then I'm gonna move my yarn to the back and knit the yellow color. All right, and there you can see we have a purple stitch and a yellow stitch. What that did was it kind of flipped the colors around so that instead of having um, the, so if we flip this over so you can see, instead of having the, well, you know what, let's just keep going. Let's keep going. It's a little tricky when you're first starting out the first couple rows. Same concept applies for the next block though. 
we want to go ahead and make sure this is a yellow square that's facing us instead of a purple stitch. We want it to be yellow. So we're gonna purl the color we don't wanna see, the purple, 